Thank you for tuning in to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afio Levi Israel. Now, if you're interested in helping us promote our brand, please feel free to donate to our cash app. Our cash app is uh, dollar sign Afiel Levi. That's A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I. And that'll go directly to the Forefront Radio so we can produce more incredible shows for you to listen to. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download this free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. This brothers don't know the Bible. To whom pertain it? To to whom pertain it? Bring it out. Belongs to the the adoption Uh and the glory and the the covenant. Look, why you waiting? They brain gone like decapitation No knowledge, no laws, God, they forsaken Put on slave ships, not a cruise line, Jacob No martinis for that long trip, stop playing They changed our name with hot flames, branded on our faces Throw our kids in dirty water, alligator baiting Hundred million dead people, blood on the pavement You say Jesus, but I'm looking at these crackers like they Satan Like they Satan, nigga playing, nigga playing They paying for their crimes, calling statute limitations they saying that it ain't them, that it was their fathers Isaiah 14 say prepare them for their slaughter This for Mike Brown, Trayvon Martin, Eric Gardner Babylon falling, fire burning arson Christ coming back real black like the charcoal Burning up these heathen for the evils that they conjured It's for us our eyes have yet failed, for our vain help In our watching we have watched for a nation They couldn't save us, they slay us And get out free like they made us But it's just the game up, the black messiah Look, I ain't finished Esau soon will be diminished Mount of Zion full of saviors Call him God's shit 144, Esau about to be a victim Keep the laws, then we get them On the day of vengeance Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Esau running for their life Like it's LA Fitness Revelation 18.6, double portion with them Try to hide the caves But they scream and let's get them He that leader with the sword Gonna die by the sword They gonna be surprised Black Christ coming in for war They ain't heard this before No more nice Negroes Time for real heroes Esau be zero Just like Nat Turner Turn me up, we gone Turn me up, we gone And I'm out, it's light. Now he's mad about the way we're teaching the bus I'm as mad as hell But I'm not gonna take this anymore us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation. They couldn't save us, they slay us and get out free like they made us. But it's just the game up, the black messiah can save Never us. trust my enemies, I know what you did to me. Lot in the KJV, Revelations 1 and 3. Reading through these mysteries, our praises, now we got the keys. Unlocking hope and giving hope to those that seek the Holy Ghost. My holy folks gonna hold me down. Exhorting on a daily basis, found for temptation. Crappy counsel just around the way. Snooze, you lose, you lose, you snooze awake, you know you slugger I see brothers killing brothers, ministers, women, raising monsters That's why we crying loud on you busters Scripping, ripping through the trenches in the seas of the ghetto My people had a lower state, the prophets here to motivate Isaiah 61 and 1, grinding up these broken hearts Reform to they make Listening to the Forefront Radio, where we discuss history, the Bible, the history of the Israelites, science, and other matters. Bring it out. The history of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as it relates to the Bible. Who were you prior to slavery? Who were you prior to colonization? These answers and more can be seen and heard as you listen to the Forefront Radio. Sin, bro, 
better to die suddenly When I learn the truth, I got myself together Examine myself through the stormy weather Sirach chapter 2, constantly endure Overcome temptations, live your life pure Be strong in the Lord when you live in a low estate Take cheerfully, put a smile up on your face Understand His grace you are listening to The Forefront Radio. I am your host, Afiel Israel. Thank you so much for tuning into The Forefront Radio. We appreciate you tuning in, listening. We're available on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and other platforms. This is a part of the 30-Day Content Creators of Color Collective for Black Wonderful History Month, where we're going into the history of the Black diaspora. So we're going to get into this. We're going to uh, talk about black history baby we're going to talk about recent history and stuff from the past so stay tuned listen close as we uh, share but prior to doing so we're going to check out this uh pod next commercial difficult to come up with content ideas for your podcast or perhaps you've gotten stuck doing an interview with a guest where you just have nothing to ask anymore try pod decks today Poddex is the best all-in-one podcast idea generation tool. You get everything from episode ideas to interesting conversation starters for interviews, engaging discussions for your live streams, and even social media content ideas. With this tool, you don't have to spend weeks trying to come up with content for an episode or unique questions for your guests. Just shuffle the cards and pick one at random, hit the record button, and get started. Now you can make better content, have more fun while you're at it, and get your viral moment, all with Poddex. Head over to poddex.com and use code C4C. What does Dylan Roof, Red Summer, of 1919 and the Inquisition have in common. These three events in Black history are the key factors of understanding the methodology, the theology, the idolatry of domestic terrorists. In today's episode, we're going to go into this Black History Month talking about the ideological mindset of Christian identity extremists. Now, one may ask, how does that go together? What we have failed to realize is that modern Christianity as we see it is not the Christianity of the Bible. As a matter of fact, The very thing that the Bible teaches, the modern church goes against. So we're going to ask the question, what is Dylan Roof, the Red Summer of 1919, 1920, as well as the Spanish Inquisition have in common? Find out here now on the Forefront Radio. The forefront stolen across the ocean is potent that we was golden. We chosen, we people motion. Awoken, no need of folges. Orthopedic, the bones is awoken. We not in Kansas, we not in Kansas. Life is bananas. These cops rocking blue pajamas. You throw your hands up the cancer, still in their mind. They body slam us. God's waking up, and these heathen can't stand it. Four chapters a day, keep the heathens away. Apocalypse, revelation, we snapping a day. Like Thanos and snapbacks, and we taking this rap back. No crackers, no flapjacks, no Becky, no ginger snaps. Secrets of wisdom twofold, we pure it in gold. Not by power of might but the lord is my sword we go across the world and the sea and the stores to tell him who you are you the chosen people black dog magic, black excellence black habits this black medicine yeah Everything black magic. god black king black christ Everything black magic. god black king black christ like Jesus. yeah like uh-huh In the Black History book known as the Bible, 
Our ancestors were told through Moses in the book of Leviticus how we should conduct ourselves as children of the Most High. If we were obedient to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the scriptures, we would be the top ruling nation on the earth. We would be the head and not the tail. But because of our forefathers' stiff-necked, rebellious nature, we are now, Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the tail and not the head. As a matter of fact, we are going to identify one of the generational curses that were written in the book of Leviticus. Let's examine this. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 14. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, 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 consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you, they that hate you, shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 17. Now, keep in mind, folks, this was a prophecy written thousands of years before it happened, and we must ask the question, how does this relate to Black, Hispanics, and Native Indigenous populations throughout the earth? The Bible says, the Bible says that the children of Israel would have appointed over them terror, terror. What's another word for terror? This Black History Month, we're going to get into domestic terrorism. Now, here is the correlation. Let us look at the uh, article entitled, South Carolina Lutheran Pastor Dylan Roof was church member. His family prays for the victims. All right, so in this article written by uh, Joeed Kaleem, we're going to go into just the first two paragraphs of this and kind of break it down. Think about this. Remember the verse that we read? The Most High would appoint over us terrorists. Watch this. As details surface about Dylan Roof, the 21-year-old who has been charged with murder of nine people after a brutal church shooting spree Wednesday night in Charleston, South Carolina. A faint portrait of his religious background is emerging. So what are we looking at, folks? We're looking at Christian identity extremists, those that use modern religion, not the religion of the Bible, but modern religion to assassinate, terminate, to plague innocent people, innocent black people, innocent people of the diaspora who only want to be left alone. Continuing with the article, Roof, who reportedly sat in a Bible study at the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopalian Church for almost an hour and argued with the congregants about scripture before pulling out his gun, was himself a member of a Lutheran church in Columbia. The church pastor had confirmed this on Friday. So, we find that the Bible says those that come against the children of Israel would be their, not their friends, but their enemies. Would a friend go into your house, kill all of your family, rape and rob all of your people, and then turn around and say, give me a hug. I love you. No. That's not a friend. You see, your friendly neighborhood Caucasian named Dylan Roof came into the church professing himself to be 
Christian, professing himself to be a believer in the creator. But guess what? His ideology is not the ideology of the Bible. The Bible says, thou shall not, thou shall not kill. That means don't do it. But he literally walked into a church with white Jesus on the brain and said, you black folks in here, I'm going to kill you all. What is his ideology? Lutheran church. And what we're going to prove is that the Bible says that these modern day churches are a form of white supremacy. How is it that they're a form of white supremacy? Let's read the verse again. I also, this is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 16 and 17. It says, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. What is the word terror? That is the root word of terrorism. Jump down to verse 17. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. Hold on, wait a minute. Did Dylan Roof go and slay people? Yes, he did. Did he kill people? Yes, he did. That is not a friend. That is not a friend. God sent people against our ancestors during slavery to kill us, to murder, to lynch. And this was a generational curse written of in the Holy Bible. Let's continue reading the verse. It says, and we're going to prove this, folks, how it's written in the Bible. It says, you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall rule over you. They shall, read the verse again. It says, they that hate you shall reign over you. So who has dominion reign over the populace of the African-Americans, the Haitians, the Jamaicans? Who has dominion or rulership over us? The United States of America, the British, the French, the Dutch, the Portuguese, the Italians, the Romans, the Greeks, the Edomites that the Bible speaks of, all these uh, 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 cultural, all these cultures have a direct link to slavery. Let's prove that. Let us prove that. Let's go to uh, Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. It says this, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich and their own shepherds pity them not. During slavery, did they not sell us? During slavery, did they not possess us? Meaning what? Your slave master had the authority within his hand to kill you and hold himself not guilty. He sold you and took your kids and, and put them on different plantations all across the world and said, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. Isn't that a Christian? They'll go and persecute, rape, rob, and murder, and then say, praise the Lord, I'm rich. I got money in the stock market. I got money all over the world. I got this great business and corporation, all my Fortune 500 companies. This is how America, this is how France, this is how the world established its riches through the children of Israel. What am I reading? The Bible. What am I reading? The Bible. So now let's get into this. We talked about Dylan Roof. Now let's go into the history of the Red Summer. Let's go into the history of the Red Summer. Now, according to Wikipedia, the Red Summer is a period from late winter through early autumn of 1919, during which time white supremacist terrorism there's that word again, terror, that we just read in the Bible. White supremacist terrorism and racial riots took place in more than three dozen cities across the United States, as well as in a rural county in Arkansas. Did you not hear what this article says? Not one city, not two cities, all th 30, over 36 cities, okay? 
over 36 cities. So think about it. Think if it was like a New York that has millions of people. Think like if it was a Miami or a uh, L.A. or Atlanta. 36 cities across the United States participated in white supremacist terrorism. The term Red Summer was coined by a civil rights activist and author, James Weldon Johnson, who had been employed as a field secretary by the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, since 1916. In 1919, he organized peaceful protests against the racial violence which had occurred that summer. Very important information to know, folks. In most instances, attacks consisted of white-on-black violence. In most instances, meaning the majority of the situations that we encountered were attacks consisting of white-on-black violence. So what is that telling you? Out of these 36 cities that are cited, the majority of people that sustained injuries were the the so-called blacks, the children of Israel. They were the ones that were being killed, slaughtered, tortured, lynched, burned alive during this period of time in 1920. And this is important because what we're doing is we're correlating the situation between Dylan Roof to the situation of 1919, because I can promise you with the fact that most of these people back then were a lot more religious than they are today, right? This was 1919, the heart of America establishing itself as a nation, right? At its early onset, these individuals created what we read from the Bible, where it says, those that hate you shall rule over you. Those that hate you shall slay you, shall kill you. Now, People are like, wait, 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 this can't be in the Bible. There's no way. Well, guess what? It is in the Bible. Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, said it himself. He is the one that made the prediction and prophecies that we would be hated of all nations. And we'll find that in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So the question remains, do the European nations hate our guts? Well, according to the Red Summer, this is historical evidence that we are hated of all nations. When we travel to places such as Europe, Asia, Arabia, All these nations refer to us by the derogatory term N-I-G-G-E-R. They all use it. The Chinese use it. The Japanese use it. The Arabs use it, as well as the Caucasians use it. So this is proof that the Bible is a true book. This is not just a religious book. This is a book of prophecy and a book of history pertaining to the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Continuing with this article on Wikipedia about the Red Summer, it states this. In most instances, attacks consisted of white-on-black violence. However, numerous African Americans also fought back. So our ancestors weren't just taking it and turning the other cheek. They were getting it by the knuckle. They were fighting back because guess what? Just like our ancestors in the Maccabees, they weren't just going to let the uh, Greeks kill them and do nothing about it. Hundreds of people stood up and said, no, we have a right to defend our honor, our integrity, our women, our children, and our lives. Continuing with the article, it says this. However, numerous African Americans also fought back, notably in the city of Chicago and Washington, D.C.'s race riots, which resulted in uh, 38 and 15 deaths, respectively, along with uh, even more injuries. An extensive property damage in Chicago. Still, the highest number, the highest number of fatalities occurred in the rural area around Ellen, Arkansas, where an estimated 100 to 240 black people and five white people were killed, an event known as the Ellen 
massacre. So the Elaine massacre is telling you, look at the ratio. You have five compared to 200, close to 250 people. And I promise you, it's probably way more than that. That's what they allegedly say, 250. It could have been like three, 400 for all we know. Think about the comparison. You have in one area, five Caucasian people compared to 250 people, right? Why am I making this comparison? Because a lot of times we hear about the uh, the Holocaust, right? Of the Polish peoples, the German people, and they exalt the number of 6 million people. Now, while this is a tragedy, and by far, I'm not saying that anyone should do this to anybody, what is more of a tragedy? 100 to 200 million Blacks and Latinos and Native Americans that were killed during the Spanish Inquisition, during the conquest of the Americas, during slavery and the Middle Passage, during the colonization of the Europeans coming over here to kill the Native Americans. What weighs more in your logic? Is it 66 million or 6 million? Is it 200 million or 6 million? The true atrocity of this earth, the true Holocaust, happened during our history. And the Bible documents it clearly by prophecy. It says, they that hate you shall rule over you. They will kill you and hold themselves not guilty. Now think about that. Consider that as we examine Black History Month, the Bible proves that we are the children of Israel according to these generational curses that we're reading about and backing it up with history. So now we're going to get into the next portion comparing the history of the Inquisition. Look, the wicked hate is truth like gum on a shoe, the prophet salute, Christ coming back to the truth, set fire to this thing like kerosene food, gasoline draws, and these niggas burning like fools, I'm talking to you, if you think the Bible ain't real, sold on slave ships and they put on next to the steel, got a wood food of money and a the paper they kill, destroyed for a lack of knowledge paying these bills, these silly idiots saying Jesus is white, trips is coming out, they can't put up a fight, Floyd Mayweather pulling punches tonight, getting cut up like a samurai knife. They hate him, that rebuke at the gate. We tell our people keep the law with the faith. Reading through these scriptures, bro, I really see your faith. A dead man walking in the truth and don't repent. They hate him, that rebuke at the gate. We tell our people keep the law with the faith. Reading through these scriptures, bro, I really see your faith. A dead man walking in the truth and don't repent. There was a papal bull by the Pope of Christianity, the Pope of Catholicism, that taught about the enslavement of our race, our people. This is important to know during Black History Month because Black people don't know that you're the true Jews of the Bible. You're the people of the book. They whitewashed the Black Messiah. Then they murdered and enslaved his people. This is part of history that you have not put two and two together about yet. Watch this. In an article produced by an educational um, resource, it states this. The papal bull of 1455 justified the expansion of Black African slavery within early Iberian colonies and the acquisition of more African captives and territory. But the same decree also provided a legal framework for sub-Saharan Africans to negotiate with Iberian authorities on equal footing and to make claims of their own. Should they convert to Christianity, then they'll be free. But if they didn't, they and their descendants would be enslaved. This is the 1400s, the 1500s, leading up to the 1600s. This is the early creation of the international slave trade. Now, let's jump up to the top, because that was like one of the lower paragraphs, right? 
The title of this, African Laborers for a New Empire, Iberia, Slavery, and the Atlantic World, Pope Nicholas V and the Portuguese Slave Trade, right? This is going into the Inquisition. This is going into how they attacked and enslaved our ancestors. With Portugal's expansion into Western Africa in the 15th century, that's the 1400s, Iberian merchants began to recognize the economic, uh, the, uh, economic potential of a large-scale slave tra trafficking enterprise. So they were literally having discussions about slavery. They were literally having discussions on how to enslave our people. What is the correlation? The correlation is these individuals use Christianity to abuse our people. You see, what the part of history I don't know is that black folks was living in Europe. It's a period of time known as the Dark Ages. Let's jump down and let's see the proof of that, right? 15th century Iberian legal traditions regulated Christian treatment of Jews, Muslims, and other Christians. These other Christians that it's talking about, these other Jews that it's talking about, these other Muslims that they were talking about, are who we call the Black Hebrews, the Black Moors, and the Black Christians. We don't know this history. We don't know of the fact that Leonardo da Vinci, during the period of time we know of as the Renaissance, whitewashed the image of Jesus Christ to create a Caucasian image. During the Renaissance era, that is when the Europeans took over Europe. Because at that time, the Moors and the black Jews had control over Spain, over Britain, over Scotland, over Italy, over all these different regions. So what happened? We got kicked out of Europe. We got sent to the west coast of Africa. They created laws, papal bulls, that's a law, which gave them the authority by the Portuguese to enslave our people. So what is the point of all this? What can we conclude? We can conclude based on Dylan Ruth, who was part of the uh, Lutheran Church. We can base basically on the uh, Christian background of the individuals involved with the massacre of 1919 called the Red Summer, because a majority of them were Caucasian Christians, white identity domestic terrorists. And the correlation now between the Inquisition and the slave trade, right around the same time period. I find it funny that you have an Inquisition over the earth where they're forcing, quote unquote, Judaizers, Judaizers, meaning, hmm, they're similar to those that have a faith and belief system of the Jews. So these Judaizers, those that wanted to keep the commandments of the Bible, were being attacked and forced to convert to worship a white God, a white Jesus, white supremacy. This is the root and ideology behind movements such as the neo-Nazis, movements such as the Ku Klux Klan. Because in order to have a, 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 a system where people can collectively unite they have to operate out of religion. They have to have the same mindset. So what is the root mindset? Catholicism. Modern Christianity. Modern white supremacy. Because clearly when you read that the Bible teaches that the Jews are black, that the people of the Bible went into slavery, how was that, how did that, history get established. This is why they don't want you to read the Old Testament. This is why they removed the Apocrypha from the original 1611 Bibles. This is why they tell you, oh, just read Psalms. Just read, you know, the good, happy-go-lucky stuff. That's why everybody, no matter if they gone to church or not, the only damn Bible verse y'all know is John 3, 16. 
for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, brother, the world. God loves everybody, just like the song. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. That is that is the mindset of post-traumatic slave syndrome. That is the mindset of Stockholm Syndrome. When I come across various people and I ask them, do you know that Jesus Christ is black according to the Bible? You know what they say? Color doesn't matter. That is the mindset of a slave. Because if color doesn't matter, you wouldn't go and run at 100 miles an hour through a red light. Because more than likely, you're going to crash. More than likely, you're going to get in an accident and you may potentially risk your life. <laughs> so I asked them, are you delusional? What, what's wrong with you? What do you mean color doesn't matter? What are you talking about? You're telling me that the greatest man to ever walk on the earth, when I tell you that he has woolly hair, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, that he has his feet is so dark that it looks like it burned in a furnace. When I tell you that Daniel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6 states that his arms and his feet, like in color, like in color, like in color to polished brass. And they ask you, hey, what did they call you in the 1920s and the 1950s uh, or so? Um, Colored. Oh, you haven't put two and two together? That colored folks is the same colored folks that's in the Bible? You are listening to the Forefront Radio. We just gave you the truth, and the truth will set you free. We appreciate you listening. I hope this content can inform you and maybe remove the 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 blemish of European domination from your minds. For those of you that are not Black, not Hispanic, but you're listening to this podcast, I want to tell you thank you so much for leaving documented evidence proving that we are the children of Israel according to the Bible. Thank you so much for not uh, uh, keeping us from being able to read and write because now we can do a Google search. Now we can look in books. Now we can go back and see who were we prior to slavery? Thank you for listening. You are listening also to the Content Creators of Color. You can follow us on Instagram, look up Content Creators of Color, or type hashtag C4 Challenge. Peace and blessings to you all. You can find the Forefront Radio on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and other podcast platforms. You can also find us on Instagram as The Forefront Express, on uh, Facebook as The Forefront uh, Media. If you want to email me, send me hate mail, whatever. You know, I love everybody. Uh, send it to me at TheForefrontBlackMedia at gmail.com. That's my two cents, folks. You can keep the change. Purchase your tracks today. Christ is my God, He is my King, He is my Lord, my everything. My confidant, and for him I ride Keeping the commandments until the day I die Christ is my God, he is my king He is my Lord, my everything My confidant, and for him I ride Keeping the commandments until the day I die Said it was Christ who drew me out of the mud Thanks to why you I see, man, cause they be the plug I was hanging with the killers, drug dealers and stuff Until my savior intervened and said that life is enough So I started praying more and watching videos on YouTube Keeping all the feast days cause that's what the Lord say do And now I'm on the block with the prophets And we're teaching the people to stop sinning Cause we gotta get the kingdom and for that major change, I gotta give a major praise By fasting and praying, subduing all my ways He ain't have to show me mercy, but he gave me grace So ten times more, I'ma seek his face When I'm going through affliction, he's the one I seek To give me patience and guidance and the spirit of peace I pray to never go off, always stay me To the one truth, one God, one King Christ is my God, he is my King He is my Lord, my everything 
my confidant, if it hit my ride, keeping the commandments until the day I die, Christ is my God, he is my king, he is my lord, my everything, my confidant, if it hit my ride, keeping the commandments until the day I die, we the Jews and Christ the King If you ain't rolling with the Father, better get on the team We the prophets back in the earth, for telling what we foreseen From ancient Babylon to Alexander the King Ain't nothing new under the sun, we catching hell today But when he finally cracked the sky, it's gonna be hell to pay We put an address on and mail it straight to your place And we don't peel and talk at all, we tell it straight to your face We the army of the Lord, so we following suit And I ain't scared to lose my life, long as I die in the truth Tell my wife I did my best and tell my kids that I love them That's why I before I go to camp, I give a kiss and I hug him. I'm ten toes down like a gator in the crease. Since I woke up to the truth, I ain't going back to sleep. Be strong in the Lord and stay away from being weak. When you see me in the streets, I be bold when I speak. Cause Christ is my God. He is my King. He is my Lord. My everything. My confidant. If it hit my ride, keeping the commandments until the day I die. Christ is my God. He is my King. He is my Lord. My everything, my confidant, if it hit my right, keeping the commandments until the day I die. Hey, my friend, you have just listened to The Forefront Radio. Please leave your comment and input about the show, what you like about the show, as well as any general feedback on ways to improve. We need your help to acquire new equipment to implement studio quality video and audio to our friends. Contribute as little as $4.99. It's only worth a cup of coffee. Then we can produce documentaries, more episodes, and great info for the diaspora. Go to Cash App and enter A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I to donate to the Forefront Radio to cover our advertising costs and reach more people. Catch our next episode on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, anchor.fm slash the forefront. Always remember, the truth shall liberate the mind. Peace to the heirs of promise and the heritage of the scattered 12 tribes.